So the scenario is we have a 25 meter tall cliff, a ball thrown at an angle of 20 degrees, but with a speed of 11.5 meters per second, 20 degrees above the horizontal. So it looks a little something like this. We've got ourselves a cliff. Cliff, cliff has a height. We should always be labeling up our scenarios. 25.0 meters. I'm going to identify, just for fun, I'm going to make up be positive this time, and I'm going to make forward be positive, and down is going to be negative. Thank you very much. And we're going to draw in our vector, our launch vector. I'm going to call it V1. V1. And of course, we're going to have to identify our V1x and our V1y. And we happen to know that this angle, this interior angle relative to the horizontal is 20 degrees and V1 is equal to 11.5 meters per second. As always, finding these X and Y components, not a problem. V1X is going to be equal to V1 times cosine of theta and V1Y is going to be equal to V1 times sine of theta. We're going to calculate those two up fairly quickly. What's V1x equal to? So V1 11.5 times cos 20. That's right. Yeah. So the original velocity, we want to know the x component of that velocity. So 11.5 times cos 20. Make sure you're in degree mode. And 11.5 times sine 20 is the y component. Yeah. Who's got V1x? Yes, sir? Sorry? 10.8? You have it any more uh, accurate than that? 8, 0. Okay, well, let's take it 10.881 then, okay? Uh, meters per second. V1y? Yes, sir? 3.9. 933. 933. There's more. You don't need it. Okay. Meters per second. I like it. All right. So we haven't even stated a question yet, and we already know, just working on autopilot, that we're going to find V1x and V1y. Here's the first question What's the time that it takes to return to its original height? Okay. What time does it take? come back to its original height. What I mean by that is, if I want to resketch it just to make sure that everybody's quite clear about this, if it goes up and comes back down again, how long does it take to get to this height? Because it started at that height from its launch. Not the whole thing, just the height to get back to its, the time it takes to get to the original height. So we're definitely looking for a delta t value here. We know v1 y, v1 y, that would be right here at the time of launch, is equal to, as you said, 3.933 meters per second upwards, and we're calling up positive now, so that's fine. Um, again, if we're talking about height, we've said before, you're either thinking in, in x, kind of terms or in y kinds of terms. If it's height, it's y kinds of thinking. So acceleration in the y direction is gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. And we're calling down negative. In terms of displacement in the y direction, tell me something. What's the displacement in the y direction? Yes, sir? Zero. Zero, yeah. So delta d y is equal to zero meters. There's actually one other piece of information here that you could make based on a symmetry argument. If I have V1y going this way, what do I know about V2y at the point that it arrives at its original height? If you want to talk about symmetry, or maybe I should more, more appropriately say like some, some sort of anti-symmetry argument. Yeah? They should be the same. Same, Velocity. same magnitude, but 
but opposite directions, right? Because what goes up must come down, blah, blah, blah. So we happen to be coming back down again. So by, by a sort of a kind of symmetry argument, we've got the same magnitude but opposite direction. So we could say if we know V1y, then we, we also know that V2y is equal to negative 3.933 meters per second. Or we could say V2y is equal to negative V1y. But I think this expresses it fairly well. All right, so what time does it, how much time does it take to come back down again? Now, we, we always seem to have five pieces of information for the y component of motion. We know its initial velocity in the y direction, its final velocity in the y direction, the time it takes to traverse a particular path, the acceleration it experiences while doing that, and the displacement that it experiences while it's making its travels between point one and point two. Um, and if we know three things, then we can find a fourth thing. In this case, we know four things. This is like an overdefined situation. We can easily find a fifth thing. Uh, so what we could do is say, all right, um, I want to find time. I know A, V1, and V2. Can I use acceleration equals V2 minus V1 over delta T? Is that fair game? Well, let's try it, okay? I'm going to isolate for delta T. Delta T equals V2 minus V1 over A. I can sub in my values. V2 is going to be, going to be 3.933 meters per second. V1 is going to be, oh sorry, V2 is negative 3.933 meters per second. I'm sorry, I, I made a mistake there. V1 is positive, but we're subtracting it away. So minus positive 3.933 meters per second. And the acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. I'm just going to bring myself back up here because I've run out of space. And I say delta t is equal to, well, what's three point, negative 3.933 minus 3.933? Oh, not zero. <laughs> nice. Negative 7.866 meters per second divided by negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So all those people that are worried about us getting negative in our, in our time answer, it's okay, because the negative signs cancel each other out. You're never gonna go backwards in time by throwing a baseball. It's fine. If you do, write me a letter when you, when you get to uh, yesterday and tell me how it went, okay? Um, 7.866 divided by 9.81. What is it? 0 0.802 seconds. I like it. All right, so it took 0 0.802 seconds to get back to the original height. Can you guess by symmetry arguments how hard is it to figure out how long it took to the get to the maximum height? Divide by 2, honey. It's it's not hard at all, okay? Not hard at all, okay? Sure, you could sub in 0 for v2 and do this whole process again. It, it's like I keep on saying there's so many ways to solve these problems. It's it's getting ridiculous. As long as you follow the rules though, you'll get the same answer. Okay? All right, so we know the amount of time it takes to make this flight. I want to carry on with this and I want to try a part B. So I would like to know, I would like to know what's the maximum height, and I'll keep my picture here, part B what is the maximum height? B. What is the maximum height? Of the ball. Well, as was suggested before, delta t to get back down again, to get to the original height, is, what did we just say it was? 0 0.802 seconds. So what was one way that we could find the height to get to the maximum, or time it takes to get to the maximum? Divided by two. Divided by two. So we could say delta t, and I'm going to call it delta t max for the time that it takes to get to the maximum height, is 0 0.802, oops, 802 seconds divided by two, because it's half 
halfway along that original path as we go from here back down to here and then keep on going again this was 0 0.802 seconds this is going to occur at half that amount of time because of symmetry arguments and so we say that delta t to get to the max position if this is the maximum position is 0 0.401 seconds so if I want to know what the maximum height of the ball is I haven't gotten there yet but I do know when it happens it's 0 0.401 seconds after I throw the ball and if I'm talking about height again I'm being a y thinker I'm thinking in y directions right now so I'm gonna write down what I know in the y direction v1y we said previously so we'll say it again is 3.933 meters per second acceleration y or acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 one meters per second squared and we called down negative before so we'll continue to call it down for part B we're not switching up our reference frame just because we're on a part B here um, we could say that V2Y somebody told me this once before is equal to what is it? Zero. 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 Zero meters per second when it gets to its maximum and here we are again. We know four pieces of information. We know the time at which we're going to get to the maximum. We know the initial velocity as I approach the maximum, as I was starting my launch. I know the acceleration for the whole duration. And I know the velocity that I'm going to experience in the y direction, at least, when I get to my maximum height. So I've got way more information here, well, one variable more information here, than I need to solve the problem. I'm set. You like, you like any particular equation more than another for finding delta dy? What's one that you like that could get us there? Yeah? Delta dy equals the average times time. We could do the average times time. Why not? You could do delta dy equals v average. Instead of writing v average, because I don't want to mix up v average with v1 and v2, I'm going to write v1y plus v2y over 2, because that's v average, times delta t. I can even call it delta t at the maximum to be clear to myself. I could do it that way. I could also use uh, v2 squared equals v1 squared plus 2a delta d and get delta d all by itself. I could do it that way. Um, is there anything else I could do here? Could I do delta d equals v1 delta t plus 1 half a delta t squared? Sure. I know, the v, I know v1, I know a, and I know t. Can I do that? We're spoiled for choice. I'm going to use the first one just because, Andrew, I like you. All right. Delta dy is equal to, let's sub in our values, okay? V1y is 3.933 meters per second. Now, notice, this V2y that we're using in B is zero. It's not the V2y that we use for part A. If we use the same V2y, we wouldn't get the right answer for one thing, but one of them's positive 3.933 and the other one's negative 3.933. We'd get some situation where the average velocity was zero. I don't want to do that. I want to remember that I'm just dealing with this part of the story, okay? So V2 is equal to zero meters per second for this portion of the story, divided by two, um, times delta T, which we said was 0 0.401 seconds to get to the maximum height. And now here again, I, I need the help of somebody with a calculator. What's my vertical displacement going to be? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, 0.78 vertical displacement. Vertical, the delta dy. 0.79. Yeah, 0 0.79. Oh, did you round? Give me an unrounded value. 0 0.78856665. 886? Yeah, 885. 885? 885. 8.886. 8.886 if you round it. Okay, 8.86 meters. And it's a positive value, so we're going to say that it's up. Now, I want to be really clear about what value we just found here. We found the displacement from this height to this height. Is that its maximum height above the ground? No. No. What do we have to add on? Yep. The height of the cliff? Yeah, height of the cliff. No problem. We'll just add on that height of the cliff. And when we first started out this story, we said that the, hit, the cliff was 25.0 meters. And now we know what delta dy is. So if I want to know maximum height, I know that the maximum height is going to be equal to the cliff height plus 
plus delta dy, or 25.0 meters, 25 meters we said, plus, se sorry, plus 0 0.7886 meters. Can anybody do that math? No, it's hard to do in your head, very hard. 25.7886 meters. Okay, and if we want to round that off to, uh, I think we started off with three significant digits here. So approximately equal to 25.8 meters. Okay, we went up, up 0.8 meters, but now we're 25.8 meters above the ground. Okay, so if this was a person getting thrown off a cliff rather than a ball, uh, you'd be very frightened right now. Yeah? Um, is it always from the lowest points? It's all, when we say above the ground, we mean the, the lowest ground. Yeah. Okay, so that's finding the maximum height. 